dear students let us take an example from topic parabola read the question the condition to the line x by p plus y by q is equal to 1 is a tangent to the parabola y square is equal to 4 ax is options are a plus p square is equal to 0 option b a p plus q square is equal to 0 option c a minus q square is equal to 0 option d a minus p is equal to 0 before solving this example we must know about condition for tangency that is a line in the form of y is equal to mx plus c if it touches the parabola y square is equal to 4 ax the condition for the tangency is c is equal to a by m c is equal to a by m so before this by just take this given equation express this given equation in the form of y is equal to mx plus c so the given equation can be written as y by q y by q is equal to minus x by p plus 1 look at this given line equation can be written as y by q is equal to minus x by b so multiplying both sides by q why because we are going to express this equation in the form of y is equal to mx plus c so multiplying by q then what happened y is equal to y is equal to minus q by p x plus q again just see we take this step once again so we are multiplying by q that is what minus q by p into x plus q now the given line exactly in the form of y is equal to m x plus c this is the y is equal to m x plus c the condition is c is equal to a by m c is now q a is equal to a and m is equal to minus q by p just note down this step condition for the tangent c is c is equal to a by m c is equal to q c is equal to q and a by m is equal to after cross multiplication after cross multiplication a is equal to a is equal to minus q square by p minus q square by p after cross multiplication a is equal to minus q square by p then therefore after simplification again a p plus q square is equal to 0 so the required answer is a p plus q square is equal to 0 the right option for this question is option b is the right option a p plus q square is equal to 0 is the right option that is option b is the right option so once again just i review before solving this example one must know about the condition for the tangency if a line y is equal to mx plus c touches the parabola then the condition for the tangency is c is equal to a by m first before solving such examples convert or transform the given line equation in the form of y is equal to mx plus c where you get the value of m and c simple application of condition c is equal to a by m and you, you get c value and m value from the given line equation and after cross multiplication for this example a p plus q square is equal to 0 therefore option b is the right option dear students please take down this problem move on to next question from the parabola so this question based on length of lattice rectum as we know that for any parabola length of lattice rectum is 4a so but here if you observe this equation of parabola so let me read the question first the length of the lattice rectum of the parabola y square plus 8x minus 4y minus 4 is equal to 0 is options are a is equal to 2 b is equal to 1 c is equal to 8 d is equal to 3 dear students if you observe this equation if you try to simplify you get this we can see this equation in the form of y minus k whole square is equal to 4a into x minus h 
there the 4a indicates length of lattice rectum. To express this in the form of y minus k whole square is equal to 4a into x minus h, we will have to apply method of completing the square. So, it is better I am just going to give you the shortcut to find out length of lattice rectum for this. So, to find out length of lattice rectum of this question is modulus of coefficient of x coefficient of x upon coefficient of y square. Please note down this technique, please note down this technique here. To find out length of lattice rectum, the formula is modulus of coefficient of x upon coefficient of y square, but here coefficient of x is the coefficient of x is 8, coefficient of y square is equal to 1. Therefore, the length of lattice rectum is equal to 8. That further, so according to this question, length of lattice rectum is equal to 8 means the right option is the right option is C. The right option is C. Further, length of lattice rectum means which is equal to 4A. Therefore, A is equal to 2. Later on stages, you can use this value for finding focus and directrix, etc. Again, try to remember if the given equation of the parabola is in the form of y minus k whole square is equal to 4a into x minus h. To find the length of lattice rectum, the shortcut is modulus of coefficient of x upon coefficient of y square. Here coefficient of x is 8 and coefficient of y square is 1. Therefore, 8 is the length of lattice rectum and you are well aware of this 8 is equal to 4a. Right now, the option for this question is C. Dear students, please note down this example. Let us discuss one more example based on this parabola topic. Read the question. An equilateral triangle is inscribed in the parabola y square is equal to 8x, whose vertex is at the vertex of the parabola. The length of its side is. Dear students, in this question, we have to find out the length of the equilateral triangle. As we know that all the sides are equal in equilateral triangle, but here equilateral triangle is inscribed in the parabola, but the vertex one of the vertex of the equilateral triangle is also at vertex of the parabola at this point. Here just see that since consider the equation of parabola it is in the form of y square is equal to 8x. That means y square is equal to 4ax form that is 4a is equal to 8 and a is equal to 2. So, here we came to know that the value of a is equal to 2, value of a is equal to 2 because given parabola is in the form of y square is equal to 8x. According to the question, the equilateral triangle is inscribed, the equilateral triangle is inscribed, this is the, so assume that this is the equilateral triangle all sides are equal, but diagram is not up to the dimensions. Please just imagine the equilateral triangle, the equilateral triangle is inscribed in the parabola, because according to the question equilateral triangle is inscribed in the parabola whose vertex that, that is vertex of the equilateral triangle is at vertex of the parabola at this edge. Now, it is our duty to this is this equation we know that y square is equal to 8 x y square is equal to 8 x, y square is equal to 8 x. Now, consider the length of the equilateral triangle is L, we take it as L, then automatically this is L, this will become L by 2, this will become L by 2. Again, I am telling you diagram is not up to the dimension, diagram is not up to the dimension, but here our target is to find out length of an equilateral triangle. As length is all the 
sides of the equilateral triangle are equal. So, this is L, this is L, this is half of it that is called, it is called double ordinate also we can call it as L by 2. But here you remember one thing, this portion, this portion what I am just putting dotted lines, this is represents height of the equilateral triangle. But we know that height of the equilateral triangle is 3 root 3 by 2 times of side, root 3 by 2 times of side that is height is equal to height of the equilateral triangle is root 3 by 2 L that means this portion is root 3 by 2 L this portion is root 3 by 2 L this is now at present for this point for this point the x coordinate will be root 3 by 2 L comma y coordinate is L by 2 once again see now now the one end of this this coordinate the point coordinate is x coordinate will be height of the equilateral triangle that is equal to root 3 by 2 L and y coordinate will be L by 2. As we know that this point lies on parabola therefore, this point coordinates must satisfy this equation. Therefore, in the place of y we substitute L by 2 this point lies on the parabola therefore, in the place of y you can substitute L by 2 L by 2 whole square is equal to 8 into in the place of x you can substitute root 3 by 2 L root 3 by 2 L, L square that is 1 L get cancelled L by directly 4 I am writing here L by 4 please try to understand L square and L 1 L gets cancelled and 2 4 za that is 4 root 3 by cross multiplication already we have taken L is the side of equilateral triangle by cross multiplication 4 into 4 is equal to 16 root 3 the length of equilateral triangle is equal to 16 root 3 according to this uh, this therefore the option d option is the right option d option is the right option in this question once again i'll tell you the simple technique don't forget the simple fundamental basics you have to use it here we have to find out length of the equilateral triangle but here this portion clearly showing height of the equilateral triangle we know that height of the equilateral triangle is always root 3 by 2 times of side. So, then it will become x coordinate and y coordinate of this point say this point if you name it as p or suppose if you name this point is l if you name this point is l. So, then for point l the x coordinate is root 3 by 2 into l and y coordinate is l by 2 as the point l lies on the parabola the coordinates of the point l as we, we are aware that the coordinates of point l must satisfy the equation of the parabola that means in the place of y you substitute l by 2 whole square and in the place of x you substitute root 3 by 2 l after simplification you get l is equal to 16 root 3. So, among four options option d is the right option. Please use simple logic to solve such examples please take down this example. Let us move on to next example, read the question. The equation x square y square minus 2 x y square minus 3 y square minus 4 x square y plus 8 x y plus 12 y is equal to 0 represent. What does this equation represent? Options are option A, a pair of straight lines simply a pair of straight lines. Option B, a pair of straight lines and a circle. Option C, a set of four lines forming a square and a pair of straight lines and parabola. It is a very tricky example and a simple simplification of the given equation. We will see that what does this equation represents. So, observe the equation as you see if you observe the equation suddenly nobody can guess it it does not represent a circle because we know that circle general form of circle equation is x square plus y square plus 2 g x plus 2 f 5 plus c is equal to 0. Pair of lines a x square plus 2 h x square plus b y square plus 2 g x plus 2 f 5 plus c is equal to 0. So, before 
remembering all these concepts better to work on this equation and just be clear our doubt which equation does it represent. See this first 1, 2, 3 terms. In first 3 terms I think y square is common factor. So, we take out y square is common factor here. We take y square is common factor in first 3 terms. So, then x square minus 2 x minus 3. I think in uh, next remaining terms 4 y is common factor. I think minus 4 y I will take common factor minus 4 y I will take common factor in next last 3 terms that is x square minus 2 x and again minus minus so, in this equation again x square minus 2 x minus 3 x square minus 2 x minus 3 is again common factor. So, if you take x square minus 2 x minus 3 into it will be y square minus 4 y is equal to 0 is equal to 0. And this is the then when the product of two terms is equal to 0 we know that each term is equal to 0 x square minus 2 x minus 3 equals to 0 and y square minus 4 y equals to 0 y square minus 4 y is equal to 0. By factorization we get x is equal to 3, x is equal to minus 1, here y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 4, observe this here x is equal to 3 this is the quadratic equation after simplification or by factorization you get x is equal to 3 and x is equal to minus 1 clearly observe these 4 values x is equal to 3 is a straight line which is parallel to y axis x is equal to minus 1 but of course this line lies right side of y axis x is equal to minus 1 is also a line parallel to y axis it lies left side of the y axis y is equal to 0 is the equation of x axis, y is equal to 4 is the equation of a line parallel to x axis which lies above the x axis, 3 and this is 3 and 1 this is equal to 4 and this is equal to 4 that is base is 4 and height is also 4 now definitely the given equation represents 4 lines with forming the square that right option for this is option C. I just repeat once again this final last step this I can just give you the idea x is equal to 3 and positive side x is equal to minus 1 the total between distance between these two lines is 4 and y is equal to 0 it is x axis y is equal to 4 up top it is a y coordinate that is parallel to the x axis 4 that means base is 4 height is also 4 indirectly that indicates that base and height are equal these given equations clearly showing that 4 lines and definitely they will form a square. Therefore, the given equation represents 4 lines by forming the square. Option C is the right option. we will discuss problems based on topic uh, ellipse. As uh, you are just let us review some fundamental concepts of uh, ellipse before starting this example. The standard equation of ellipse is x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1. Now, down b square is equal to a square into 1 minus e square. Further, this b square is equal to a square into 1 minus e square will be helpful to find out the exact value of e. As this ellipse standard ellipse has two axes like one is called major axis here in the diagram I have shown you this it is called major axis x axis is the major axis and distance between these two points is called length of major axis and y axis is called minor axis and 
this has two foci, two directrices, two lateral recta. So, it is a symmetrical about y axis standard and both symmetrical about y axis and x axis. So, let us start with this example, no? simple example. The angle between the lines, we have to find out the angle between the lines joining the foci of an ellipse, this is S and S dash are the ellipse, to an extremity of the minor axis. In this diagram, these two are called, these two points are called extremity of the minor axis e is 90 degrees, then the value of E that is eccentricity is equal to options are 1 by 2, B 1 by root 2, C 3 by 4, D 2 by root 5. Dear students, you may just start searching the options that you may be having some basic idea that for ellipse eccentricity is always less than 1. But if you observe, on that basis if you observe all the options are all or almost all less than 1 only. But eccentricity is a constant ratio. So, instead of this simply hanging around and beating the bish around this options, better we try to work on this question in a simplest manner in the smallest way. So, how to this, once again I will read the question clearly. The angle between the lines joining the foci of an ellipse to an extremity of any one of the one extremity of the minor axis is 90 degrees, then the value of E. That means, so lines joining the foci an extremity. So, this is, so this is, this, this is called 90 degrees, this is called 90 degrees. Then this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees means it will be 45, 45, then automatically this is 45, this triangle will be right angled isosceles triangle. And here we can find two triangles, both are right angled isosceles triangle. As we know that the distance between center to focus is AE and the length of minor axis is B, that is length of semi minor axis is B and this portion is B. So, clearly we came to know that two sides are equal because it is a right angled isosceles triangle. Therefore, B is equal to A E we can take got to the point. Let me explain this. After joining since these two are perpendicular means perpendicular means definitely this is 45 and this is 45 90 this is 45. This triangle will be right angled isosceles triangle in which two sides are equal this side is B and this side is A and distance of the focus from the center is always in ellipse is A E. So, always one more shortcut A e is always equal to square root of A square minus B square. So, therefore, B is equal to A e. So, here this can be written as B by A is equal to E, this can be written as B by A is equal to. So, we know the eccentricity formula B square is equal to A square into 1 minus E square. I will just try to simplify to find out eccentricity formula B square is equal to A square into 1 minus E square, take cross multiplication B square by A square. So, B square by A square is equal to therefore, this can be written as B square by A square is equal to 1 minus E square. Now, directly you can simplify it B by A is equal to E, B by A is equal to E. Therefore, B square by A square is equal to B square by A square is equal to E square plus E square is equal to 1. Now, rest all remaining simplifications are 2 E square is equal to 1 and e square is equal to 2 e square is equal to 1 e square is equal to 1 by 2 and e is equal to 1 by root 2 e is equal to 1 by root 2 the eccentricity is 1 by root 2. So, here the right option is b the right option is b. Let me explain once again please let me explain once again because this is a new concept for you people you might have you have studied some basic fundamentals of ellipse. But even though, let me just explain once again. Always remember two simple things. Distance of a focus from center in the ellipse is always A E and this is called semi minor axis, this is B. But here, according to the given data, lines joining from foci to one extremity forms a 90 degrees angle at one end of the extremity. Therefore, it will be the triangle will be right angled isosceles triangle. 
if a triangle is right angled isosceles triangle means two sides are equal therefore in this question b is equal to a so b is equal to a means b by a is equal to a. now we use simple formula simple rule to find out eccentricity formula b square is equal to a square into 1 minus c square take cross multiplication b square by a square is equal to 1 minus c square and b square b by a is e therefore b square by a square is e square and this e square you take this side e square plus e square is equal to 1 2 e square is equal to 1 therefore e square is equal to 1 by 2 and e is equal to 1 by root 2 for this example option b is the right option please note down this problem